Good morning and welcome to our service. My name is Cal Lord and I have the honor of being the pastor serving this congregation. Uh, we want to just welcome you here and before we begin I want to share a few announcements. Most of these you'll see printed in our program today. Uh, next week we begin our full slate of Sunday school and adult Bible studies and so I hope you'll take note of that. Uh, we're welcoming, welcoming our children back for three classes that will meet during the worship hour. Uh, and we also have two adult Bible studies that will be meeting at 9 a.m. We are continuing our parking lot services at 9 a.m. for the next two Sundays, weather permitting. And so if you're still a little nervous about coming back into the sanctuary, we invite you to come and participate in our 9 a.m. parking lot service. Also, I just want to let you know that we are having some small groups. You'll see them printed in the bulletin. And I want to also just remind you that if you would like to have a copy of uh, our service on CD, we have those available, and uh, you can call the office to get any other things that you see or to ask questions about things in the bulletin. With that being said, I'm going to invite Skip now as we begin our worship. From James 1 verses 23 through 24. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Uh, let us pray. We come to you this morning, Lord, to worship you, to listen to you, and to pray for your love in words. Be with us today and forever to carry us through the darkness of this world, for you are the one to bring us the light of our life. Be with the people who don't know you, Lord. Have them come to you and hope your voice comes within you so they can also live within your kingdom. And thank you, Lord, for the prayer you taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, if you could all join us in the openings, the hymn, just as well, Cal will be coming up soon here, just as I am without one plea, verses 445. <laughs> It says in the scriptures that Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. In our church, we dedicate children. We have the parents bring them in and we pray a blessing over them as the parents make promises that they will raise them in a Christian home. When you get to be the age of reason or a little bit older, you can make your own decision whether you will follow Christ or not. Mabel has been following Christ all of her adult life since she was a young girl and yet never had the joy of being baptized in this way. 
And so a little earlier this summer, she said, I'd like to be baptized as I express my faith in Christ in this very special ritual. And so today, Mabel stands before us expressing her love of Jesus Christ and her willingness to die to self and to rise a new creation in Jesus' name. Mabel, do you have anything you'd like to say? Okay, there we go. Mabel, do you believe in God as your eternal Father and Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and in the Holy Spirit as your Comforter? I do. Then, Almighty Lord, we ask you to receive the confession of this your child, causing her to know the newness of life which you have already poured into her life through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I now baptize you. There you go. Okay. Congratulations. You are now officially a part of the body of Jesus Christ. I want to also give you at this time a remembrance. It's a beautiful rose that will help mark this day. The rose is the queen of all flowers, the most beautiful. And yet I remind you that it also has thorns. Once you confess your love of Christ, the devil doesn't like it. And so you might have a few thorns that come your way, but know that the beauty of Christ, the blood of Christ covers you now for now and evermore. God bless you today, Mabel, for your faithfulness. Amen. We have done as our Lord has commanded. Even as Mabel has been baptized and confessed her faith and committed herself to discipleship, let us all now renew our own baptismal vow. Will you pray with me? Our Father, as we have witnessed this act of obedience, we have remembered that day when we too gave witness to our faith in baptism. Make alive that memory by baptizing us afresh with your Holy Spirit. May we know once again the newness of life, which has been so abundantly evidenced by Mabel Payne, who this day has been baptized. Open our hearts to her now as a member of this congregation, that we may receive her into our midst, and that she may know the same spirit of love that was in Christ, who loved us and gave herself for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to sing the next verse of Just As I Am. sing our opening hymn. Well, here, am I, here I am again. <laughs> and now it's uh, time for the recognition of our first responders. Mr. Lord. But this year, because of the pandemic, we've had to postpone that until next May. And so we've asked each of the congregations to do something, uh, maybe recognize the first responders in their services or by dropping into the station houses and sharing our care and respect and love for them. And so here at Central Baptist, we're taking this opportunity in our morning worship to say thank you for our members and also members of the community. And so I want to just read the names of those first responders who are here today or are a part of our church family. You'll find them, most of them, in the bulletin. Lenny Ballesteros, Max Birch, Kanan Brissett, Bill Davis, Billy Davis, Scott Harold, Reese Harold, 
Teresa Hirsch, Will Kerr, Chris Koretsky, Dwayne Miranda, Kyle Marsh, John Mathewson, James McPherson, Seth Mosley, Joseph Nicolosi, Tony Perrone, Gil Scott, Darren Stewart, James Stewart, Eric Thompson, Ruth Ann Stewart, and Richard Walters. Uh, just to kind of mark this occasion, I have a few uh, certificates and awards I'd like to present to those who are here today. And I want to say something before I present those certificates. This is for the kids who may be watching at home or here. Some of you know that my favorite story is Toy Story. And we know that when we need a buddy, when we need someone to call on, you know who's there? Woody. Woody's always there because he cares about us and what's happening in our lives. When I think about the first responders, the firemen and women, the police officers, the emergency medical service personnel, I've seen them in action and they care about you and me. When you need a friend, you've got Woody, but you've also got these brave men and women. And so today I'm gonna to honor all of our Woodies. the names. Oh, I already did. Okay. We have certificates for all of these men and women, and we're going to be mailing them for those of you who are watching at home 
and can't be here today. Thank you very much. Skip, if you'll move on now, we'll read the scripture reading. I guess nobody minds hearing it twice, do you? <laughs> Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who will rise, I mean, those are, who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. God bless the meaning of his word, reading of his word. My message today is titled, The Words We Want to Hear. Today we close out our walk through the book of Daniel. The book ends with these words in verse 13. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. Now again, I always like that word inheritance. It's something that you can look forward to, except for Lori and I, our, our parents have been spending their inheritance. And, I think that's a good thing, and we want them to do that. But Jesus said something similar to this in Matthew chapter 25 at the end of the parable of the talents. He said, well done, good and faithful servants. And I think at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, these are the words that we all want to hear. We want to know that we have been faithful and done all that we could to please and glorify God. I had a friend of mine who said it simply, at my funeral, I hope people can say he always tried to do the right thing. Over the last eight weeks, we've heard, had the opportunity to get to know the prophet Daniel. He was a man of faith and conviction. He chose to do the right thing even at his own peril. Do you remember the lion's den? I can't help but think of the first responders, the men and women I have met over the years who go out every day willing to make sacrifices for the good of others. Because they care about people, some they may never know, they rush into the lion's den of humanity without knowing what they'll find. I want to publicly thank those who are here today or who are watching from home for your service to our communities. We are better because you are standing watch. It is a thankless job, but I want you to know that you are appreciated. I pray that at the end of your service, you will hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. For truly, you have and you are making a difference in the lives of countless others. So thank you and God bless you. You know, I love to walk along the shore. A couple of years ago, I was doing it regularly. I was, I was trying to lose weight. I figured walking in the sand actually would do more than just walking on the street, and it helped. Uh, some of you may remember I was having a weight loss contest with Pastor Sunil from across the street, and I won. I think it was those walks along the sand. One of the things that I always thought was interesting was the fact that as I would walk down the beach, I would notice a lot of footprints. But as I came back very often, especially when the tide was coming in, those footprints would be washed away. Maybe that's why the Hollywood stars have their footprints embedded in cement rather than sand. There's a sense of permanence about it. It says to the world that these people mattered. The word to Daniel in chapter 12 is that we should do something with our lives that matters. It may be our service in the church or in the community or even in our families. But we need to live for something other than ourselves. Author and pastor Max Lucado wrote a powerful little book titled, Outlive Your Lives. Using biblical heroes, he pointed to the fact that the noblest thing we can do with our lives is to give them away, to work for the betterment of others. Now we do that in many ways. Think about what Mabel did today. She didn't have to be baptized. It's obvious that she loves Jesus, she loves her family, and her community. 
She's given herself to the folks at Westerly Hospital for years. She's hardworking, dedicated, and when her name is mentioned, a smile comes to people's faces. The words of Daniel 2 fit Mabel. It says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness are like the stars forever and ever. And being baptized today, Mabel is sharing her testimony with all of us. It says that she loves the Lord and she has put Christ first in her life. The good news that Mabel already knows is that when you put Christ first, everything else falls into place too. It's suggested here in Daniel 12 that there is more to life than doing your job and doing it well. That's why Daniel was given a vision. And you can read that vision if you read all of chapter 12. He saw the end of... And that's why Daniel was given this vision. He saw them and he was told at, at the end of time we'll all be judged. He was told that what we do now matters in eternity. We're not just living for today. Our calling is to share the good news with everyone we meet. We are called and sent out to offer the hope of the gospel, to be an encourager in the faith, and to love people in Jesus' name. I think that our first responders do that. Jesus said there's no greater gift you can give than to lay down your life for another, and I hope that none of these firefighters or police officers or EMS ever has to do that. And yet, as you hear some of their stories, we just passed September 11th, and we hear the stories of the brave men and women who rushed into danger while everyone was running away. There's no greater gift, and they gave it. And some who we know may also give it along the way. The good news is that we're all called to do it in our own way. That's one of the things I learned in my ministry as a chaplain. I'm not going to be able to do what Max Burt or Teresa Hirsch does. They've had years of training, but I can do what Cal Lord can do, and you can do what you can do. When you give your testimony, when you share what God has done in your life, it is much more powerful than sharing someone else's story, because your story is unique. I was in a clergy meeting last week, and one of the pastors said something that resonated with me because it was true for me as well. He said he finally accepted the call to ministry when his mentor told him that God wasn't calling him to be Billy Graham or Pope John Paul. He was calling him to be himself. That's what God asks of all of us, to take the gifts and talents that we have and to use them for the glory of God. When I first joined the fire department, I confessed that I was in over my head. I didn't know what I was doing. Some would say I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but Bill Davis stepped up and he saw me being frustrated one day and he took me aside and, and he said not to worry about being like everyone else. Just do what you can do. Mother Teresa suggested something along those lines when she was asked what she could do to change the world. And we know her story. We know the impact she made on lives and eternities. And you know what she said? She said, go home and love your family. You see, all ministry begins close to home. It's, doing, it's done by doing the small things that matter with the people in your life or the people that God has sent you to serve. It's making sure that the kids go to Sunday school so they have a strong foundation of faith to build their lives on. You know, before I got to the Watch Hill Fire Department, the resident chaplain, even though he didn't have the title, was Chris Koretsky. Because Chris has been faithful from his youth to attend Mass. And whenever he needed to bring in a theological perspective or something was happening that we needed to be reminded that God was there, Chris would often share the word. Now, he got made fun of probably a few times. I don't because they take pity on me. But it's also attending worship as you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and be encouraged in your walk with Christ. It's daily reading the Word of God and letting it fill your heart and your mind. And I want to say that sometimes people get intimidated by, by the Scriptures. 
They say, I just don't get it. The words are so hard. And, and some are still reading the King James Version. But even when you read some of the easier translations, it seems to go right over your head. I'll never forget, I told one young man as he was trying to go deeper in his faith, I said, if you want to start to read the Bible, start with the Gospels. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because they tell the stories of Jesus. They tell you about his love and the salvation and the hope that he was offering. And it was kind of funny because he came back to me afterwards and he says, I must be doing something wrong. He said, I read Matthew, and then I started reading Mark, and it sounded very similar. And then I opened a Luke, and it seemed like many of the same stories were being repeated. What's up with that? And I said, because the Gospels give us different perspectives, different people's uh, uh, relationships, and how they have been touched by Jesus. Just like you will be a living Gospel one day as you explore God's Word and live it. The last thing is to live and love God by loving your neighbors. And that's what we've seen in our first responders, and that's what we see in Mabel's ministry at the hospital in the community. Loving God by loving your neighbors. You know, that's all that Daniel did. He simply followed God and listened to his heart. He stood up for his convictions, and he lived out his faith. He was faithful in the little things, and that changed the world of his day. His testimony moved the hearts of those around him. And it was because of his faithfulness and his unwillingness to go away from God's word. In his faithfulness, he did more for the Israelites than anyone else in the kingdom. He turned the hearts of not just one king, but several. And it was his testimony and his faithfulness that led the king to send the Israelites back to Jerusalem so that they could rebuild. The king was not Jewish. The king was Persian. And yet he saw the strength, the might, the power, the love of David and uh, of Daniel and his God. And he said that God must be honored. Daniel lived 600 years before Jesus, yet his life was one of commitment to the Lord. And he most certainly heard the words, well done, good and faithful servant. My prayer for you and for me is that when that day comes, our lives will be such a testimony to faithfulness that you and I too will hear the words we all want to hear. May you be blessed in your service, not only to our community, but to our families and to our church. God bless you all. Amen. We're going to close our service today by singing All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. I promised some of the firefighters and police officers here today that they would have a shorter service, uh, 45 or 50 minutes. I don't have my watch, so there you go. But now, use whatever extra time you have to serve the Lord. God bless you all. Let's sing All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. <laughs>